Hi everyone, welcome to another Q&A with Kareen. And uh, this week's question I thought would be appropriate as we move into the growing season. So Julie asks, what are your top 10 or any number of favorite crops, including variety to grow in our climate that could potentially feed a family? I'm specifically, specifically thinking about calories and macro and micronutrients, flexibility and preparation, ease of growing, and the ability to store or preserve. In other words, if the shit hits the fan uh, and we have limited time to devote to a garden but need to feed a family, what would you recommend? So this is a huge question, of course, and I don't know, I have not done the math, whether what I'm going to recommend will actually, um, you know, keep a family alive uh, should things go awry. Um, but these are varieties that... Um, I would recommend or, or things that I would recommend growing. Um, so my first thing that I would recommend growing just for the calories and for the nutrient value um, is winter squash. Um, so acorn and delicata um, are really good to grow here because they're smaller varieties. So there's more likelihood that they'll mature on time in a colder climate or with a shorter growing season. Um, and they're easy to preserve, right? You harvest them and then you put them in a cool, dark place uh, and that's all you need to do. Um, and so I love growing uh, winter squash for that reason. And because, of course, they're delicious. Um, so that's uh, one of the first things that I would grow. The second thing that I would recommend are potatoes. And um, we have several different varieties, you know, Yukon Gold, Kennebec, uh, Red Gold, um, all of those um, do well in our climate. And I will say that I'm mentioning specific varieties, but if you don't live where we live here in Montana, I just recommend, right, the directive is, go with what farmers are growing in your area. Go with what local nurseries and garden centers um, have available. Um, so always go local if you can um, to find these specific varieties. Um, so depending on what, you know, farmers especially will know what does well. So winter squash, potatoes. The third thing that I would grow is garlic. Um, one, because it's super easy to grow. Um, super easy to maintain and super easy to store. Uh, and um, not only does it have those nutrients, it also has medicinal value as well, um, which you might need um, should everything go south. Um, so that's my third recommendation. My fourth is ORAC, um, green and red ORAC. Uh, one, because of their nutrient value, two, because they are a self-seeding annual. Um, and so I have only ever planted them once in my garden. They come back year after year. And so it's, they're super abundant. Um, and I haven't looked this up, but I bet you could also probably um, eat the seeds if you needed to. Um, so that might be another way to use them. And they have like super ab abundant seeds as well. But just ease of growing, that's why I would um, choose ORAC. In terms of preserving, you could probably just braise it and freeze it um, fairly easily and then add it to soups. Uh, another um, crop I would recommend is kale. Uh, again, because it's super nutritious um, and and also because it oftentimes self-seeds in a garden. Um, red Russian kale seems to be a variety that does that fairly easily. Um, so again, that would be something that you might only have to put in once and then it continues to produce year after year uh, without much work. Uh, another crop I'd recommend is Swiss chard. Um, the rainbow variety is awesome because it's beautiful in the garden uh, and it's very abundant. Uh, and so I, that's kind of why I would grow it. And not to mention, of course, it's also nutritious. You know, these deep greens, these deep purple vegetables are often um, highest in nutrient value. Um, the next thing that I would recommend is cabbage, probably a red cabbage as opposed to a green. Um, there are varieties like Omero and Primero, um, again, that um, would be fine for our shorter growing season or will mature in time for our shorter growing season. And again, another reason for those is super easy to preserve. You, normally, 
you can just harvest them and if you have a cool place to store them um, they can last a long long time without you doing anything extra uh, and when you find that they might be turning or they're not as good then you could probably convert them into sauerkraut kraut, which of course is also not a big um, uh, deal in terms of prep uh, next uh, vegetable I'd recommend are beets uh, again super nutritious uh, Detroit red is a variety that I grow um, and they're easy to store again you don't have to do anything additional um, yes you can make um, pickled beets but you don't have to right you can just keep the beets in a cool dark place um, and they'll last a long time so no um, prep needed um, next one carrots um, I would choose a, a stubbier variety of carrots just with our clay soils uh, again for those of you who don't have clay soils you might choose a different variety Nant is a good variety that I like um, so carrots, same reason as beets, super easy to store, last a really long time. Um, the other and last vegetable I would recommend are peas, um, and mostly um, because they are, of course, delicious, nutritious, and you're not having to do a lot of prep, you know, you just kind of eat them off the vine, uh, and so they can be very abundant, um, and and that those are kind of the, the top, and I like the sugar snap variety, sorry. Um, so some kind of um, snap pea probably or snow pea. I don't like shelling peas because that's just way too much work. <laughs> um, but but one of those um, varieties would be good. Uh, so those are my top 10 actually vegetables. I'd also recommend, um, you know, having perennial um, fruit or vegetable if you can as well. Um, so apples um, have, you know, high nutritious value and they store really well. Uh, again, if you can get, app, I don't want to recommend a specific variety because again, based on where you're growing, um, what I would just recommend is that you get a, a variety that is fire blight resistant. So you're not having to deal as much with the disease issues. Um, so apples would be a really good thing to grow. Um, choke berries or aronia berries, they're also known as, would also be good to grow. They're really no, low maintenance. They're not susceptible to disease. They give like huge medicinal and, new, um, and nutrient value as well. They don't taste awesome. <laughs> I just add them to um, smoothies usually. So you're not like eating them off the vine, um, but just for all of those other reasons, I think they're really great. And then you just pick them off the vine, put them in a bag and freeze them. Um, so that's not a huge amount of prep. Uh, raspberries, again, we know how nutritious um, raspberries are. They can be super prolific and abundant. Um, they are perennial. And again, they're ones where I put them on a cookie sheet, I freeze them, and then I put them in a bag and they last for a long time. So um, that's, that'd be another recommendation. And then my final one is asparagus. So again, perennial vegetables um, are really um, great as well. Anything perennial, of course, is going to be lower maintenance. So, um, <laughs> you know, who knows when the shit might hit the fan, but if it does, <laughs> let's put in some perennial crops as soon as possible. So those things are growing and continue to grow um, while you know your annual production does take a lot of time and effort. Um, so if you do have the space, um, I would recommend not only putting in apples, um, but other varieties of fruits um, that are perennial. Um, so you're having to dedicate less time um, to them year after year. Um, so those are some of the things I'd recommend. Um, let me know if you have any questions or if you all in listening to this have also other recommendations. Um, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next week. Bye.